Hello everybody and welcome back to Artifact Highlight, where either I talk about legit artifacts from hundreds of years ago, or I ramble on about stuff from the past couple decades. This is an example of the latter. So today we're going to be talking about the XFL. So for those who are not in the know, the XFL was a one season football league that was formed that was founded by Vincent, uh, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Yes, that uh, Vince McMahon, the owner of WWE, that one. And seeing as he's going to be bringing back the XFL 2020, I figured it would be a way to look back at or bash the 2001 season. <laughs> so let's tell the story. So one day, Vince McMahon went in his office, had a lot of money after, at the end of what was known as the Attitude Era in WWE, where at the very end, uh, the two other major companies in wrestling, besides WWE, WCW and ECW, had folded. He's sitting around with all that money, needs to know what he do for it. And he thinks, mm, I love to buy this Canadian Football League. And then you have his son, Shane McMahon, come in and be like, but dad, we, we can't really buy it. I mean, that's a lot of money to really waste on it. You're right. You're right, Shane. Let's invest in a new football league, and I'll call it the XFL. Oh, what does the XFL stand for? Well, what does the NFL stand for? The No Fun League? No, no it stands for National Football League. No, 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 it stands for No Fun League. So what, what, what does it mean, XFL, Extreme Football League? Dad, you can answer me. We're going to start talking today uh, with the XFL about the Birmingham Thunderbolts. Now... All the names in the XFL, they related to something like with law enforcement or chaos. So you had Chicago Enforcers, you had uh, New York Hitman, Orlando Rage, you're getting the point. But originally, the Birmingham Thunderbolts were going to be called the Birmingham Blast. Now, if you know about history in Birmingham and Blast, uh, there was the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing that occurred in the 1960s that killed four. Yeah, not a great name to use for your football team, is it? So uh, you can figure out that why at the last minute they changed it to Birmingham Thunderbolts. Now the Birmingham Thunderbolts had the worst, the, yes, the worst record in the XFL. Had only two wins and lost eight times. So they were dead last at the end of the, se the only season that the XFL had. Uh, however, they lived on, uh, the logo lives on today. I believe a softball team in the region, in the Birmingham region um, still uses this logo. All right, so we'll move on from Birmingham. Now we're going to move to Chicago. Wow, that, that, that was terrible. We'll just fix that there. There we go. We're going to talk about the Chicago Enforcers. Now, Chicago had a team also, like I mentioned earlier, Enforcers. Now, funny thing about the Chicago Enforcers, they actually, if you're familiar with wrestling, they actually used Brock Lesnar's theme before Brock Lesnar was even in the WWE. So WWE just recycled the theme song they used for the Chicago Enforcers entrances. The Enforcers had a 5-5 five and five record in their one season with the XFL. Uh, uh, and they actually finished second in Eastern Division, lost in the semifinals and the playoffs to the eventual champions, the Los Angeles Extreme, who we'll get to in a minute. Uh, oddly, though, with the season record, Chicago had one of the worst attendances for the XFL. They only had about 15,000 for a game. There's a famous photo of I've, I've ever seen of just empty red and blue seating areas, and there's just barely any fans. So, yeah, not too great of a career for the enforcers of the XFL in general. But speaking of the Los Angeles Extreme... The uh, Los Angeles Extreme went on to win what was called the Million Dollar Championship Game. It's never, I don't think, ever actually referred to the XFL Championship, but that's pretty much what it was. So in the one championship game the XFL would ever hold until 2020 when they come back and all, the uh, Los Angeles Extreme won. The XFL folded shortly after because the NBC, they were just not getting any ratings at all from this. Uh, fortunately, though, we did have some players like uh, Tommy Maddox, who would go on to do some things. Tommy Maddox was the quarterback for the Los Angeles Extreme, and he uh, also won the Most Valuable Player Award for the XFL. I, I think Tommy Gunn went on to do something, didn't he? Yeah, I think he went on to do something, you know. What, what's this jersey, you know? Yeah, nothing major. Uh, uh, the point I'm getting at is Tommy Maddox is one of only three XFL players to have won the Million Dollar Championship and the Super Bowl. He won it with the Steelers while um, being a backup quarterback in 2006. So that does it for this look back at the XFL. 
Here's hoping the XFL 2.0 lasts more than one season. So that will finish this video. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Be sure to look out for more videos and make dealing with Artifact Highlight, my traveling videos, my rail fan videos, my movie videos. I'm hoping to start doing some movie reviews, but I just haven't got the time now of school and all. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to hit that like button, and until next time.